I'll have to be honest with you, first thing I'm going to mention right up front is, is it's free. Uh, I, I like this, this, this service when, when it's free because, you know, you can tie up a lot of money in, in different services and from experience I found out that a, you, sometimes you can pay a lot of money and you, you may not be getting that much out of it. Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. Today is the 28th and we had a market moving lower here. Let's turn it over to the Grain Hedge iPad trading platform so you where we closed off the day. Corn down seven cents, soybeans down three and three quarter cents, and wheat in Chicago leading the charge to the downside here today, down 13 and three quarter cents, especially after this huge sell-off that we've seen since uh, December 26. We did have ethanol production out this morning. Uh, let's take a look at the numbers here and see where we came out. Uh, you'll notice ethanol production uh, declined 1,000 barrels per day. That brought overall production for this week down to uh, 978,000 barrels per day. This is still very positive. Notice the last three weeks, uh, when you look at this chart, the green lines represent weekly uh, ethanol numbers. You can see here the last three weeks have been very strong in a time when typically we would see ethanol production declining. Now we have seen uh, overall crush margins decline, but one of the main reasons why crush margins continue to hang in there is because DDG prices have been very strong. They've really uh, outperformed relative to corn. As soon as we got those DDGs approved there, those, um, those MIR-162 um, genetically modified seed varieties being approved over in China, that really opened up a lot of demand here and, uh, and helped cause a, a, a real sharp move here in, eth or in DDGs. Uh, in the DDG market. So the bottom line here is that ethanol continues to run ahead of pace. Ethanol production up about 5.6% over last year. USDA is only factoring in about a 0.8% increase. So we are ahead of pace. Uh, if you would expect the USDA to be right, if you are uh, kind of banking on the USDA uh, numbers being more accurate here, you would really expect a sharp slowdown in the second half of the marketing year we just haven't seen any signs of a slowdown yet. We're going to be paying close attention to this report as we move uh, through the weeks here to come. Let's talk a little bit about ethanol stocks because this is a number that's released in this EIA announcement every single week. You'll notice ethanol stocks were up 244,000 uh, barrels here to uh, 20.63 million barrels. So take a look at this chart. This chart takes into account the last five years of EIA numbers. You'll notice that I have here on the orange the high side of the range. So the high side of stocks as we move throughout the year where ethanol stocks have been uh, the ab absolute max in the last four years during these weeks. Uh, you'll notice in the blue line, the blue line is uh, the minimum uh, ethanol stocks during these weeks and the average ethanol stocks that we typically see over the last five years is the gray line. So on one line I want you to pay close attention to is the yellow line on the very far left. Of course, we're only a couple uh, weeks here into the 2015, uh, the 2015 year, but you'll notice that this week we actually have the largest ethanol stocks that we've seen. This is the maximum ethanol stocks that we've seen for this week in, uh, in the year. And, uh, and the bottom line is that very well could weigh on ethanol prices here uh, going forward. And that could very easily weigh on ethanol production, of course. Let's talk a little bit about the price action in corn today because it was very uh, disappointing. You know, there was uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of expectations here that that support around 376 would hold. You can see I have two charts up here. The first is the left, uh, the left chart, that's the daily chart. Uh, this is showing you a candlestick chart of the daily um, a daily candlestick chart. Each one of these bars is representing one day worth of price activity. And you can see that support level, that 376, which held, uh, was retested again today. And when you look at the five minute chart, this really gives you an idea of intraday price activity. You can see that we traded lower uh, down to that support level um, about early part of the morning and then we started rallying off that support level. We were unable to hold on to that rally, cupped back over the lows, retested that support, kind of consolidated there uh, for a few, um, uh, well, quite a bit of time there. And then we finally broke through. And when we broke through near the very end of the day, we had a pretty significant amount of volume compared to the volume that was traded throughout the rest of the day. 
Um, it was a very sharp move uh, and it was uh, very disappointing because now what we have is a situation where corn is truly in a bear market uh, where we have these lower lows and lower highs. Uh, really that is uh, that beginning of that trend really was established there in the later part of December. So uh, a little bit disappointing price action there for corn. I think a lot of it, it was dragged down by wheat, which was the leader to the downside. It's been an absolute dog when you look at prices and the, its price action over the last few months. Uh, you, you can really see that there's a, a desperate need for export sales, a desperate need for a pickup in export sales. Uh, the uh, export curbs that Russia has had uh, have not seemed to uh, provide any sort of additional export sales here for the U.S. And, uh, and of course the U.S. really needs to uh, start picking up export sales to get a little bit of a bid under this market. You can see um, it, it's just uh, not been very positive there for wheat, uh, continuing to make new lows. Now when you look at soybeans, this is kind of interesting, when you look at soybeans, we're also consolidating right around that 970 area here. We're going to be watching uh, export sales very closely tomorrow, and we'll get to the export sales expectations here very shortly. But we're going to be watching these export sales very closely because, of course, over the last two and a half weeks, we've seen three export cancellations. Now, we have seen additional sales added on to that, but last week's export sales were very disappointing. Only booking 14,000 metric tons. Expectations were between you know, 500 to 700,000 metric tons. So it was a very, very disappointing week. We're going to find out whether or not that's a flash in the pan last week and we have more export sales this week to show the market uh, or whether or not this is the beginning of a trend here where uh, sales start to dry up and cancellations become more and more prevalent. Uh, let's take a quick look here at export sales. Um, keep in mind that this is uh, a report coming out at 8.30 Central Standard Time. Uh, you'll notice uh, corn here, or excuse me, 7.30 Central Standard Time. The expectations for corn uh, exports is between 850 1,000 metric tons and 1.2 million metric tons. You have expectations for soybeans anywhere in between 200 to 400,000 metric tons and expectations for wheat between 250 and 450,000 metric tons. We'll see if any of these numbers here uh, provide any sort of support for this grain market, which really is having a difficult time gaining traction. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, give us a call. Number is 877-472. 4607. And remember, uh, Kevin McNew is going to be uh, speaking at a grain marketing update there at the University of Maryland. This is going to be held at the Chesapeake College uh, in Y Mills, uh, Maryland. Uh, if you are interested in going to this, go ahead and uh, email Shannon Dill. Uh, she'll sign you up, get you registered for the, uh, the marketing update there on the East Coast. Thanks a lot for tuning in. If you have any questions about what I talked about today, uh, give the office a call. Number is 877-472-4607. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you here Thursday for the Export Sales Report.